Hi, I'm Samantha and welcome to my video on IVF egg freezing. I'm going to start off by saying that this is probably going to be one of the hardest videos that I make. First, uh, saying a lot of the words that I have to say for this video just kind of makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I'm weird like that. Second, this is probably the hardest process that I have gone through and I think that it will be harder than the stuff that I have to go through to get rid of my breast cancer. If you didn't know, I have breast cancer. So if you're watching this because you need to do this, um, it's really not that bad. I'm just a baby. I also want to make it very clear that my experience with this is a lot different than other people because I'm doing it as a cancer patient. I was doing it because there could be a future problem with my fertility, not because I already have a problem with it. A lot of people who go into this have been trying to have a baby for so long. And I'm 22 and I've never tried to have a baby or really ever thought much about that or ever even put myself in the position to possibly get pregnant. Anyway, there's a lot of stories of these people finally figuring out that there's something wrong with them and then they have to go through multiple rounds of this and sometimes it doesn't even work. And wow, just all that must be so hard. But this isn't going to be a story of any of that, uh, so if you need that emotional aspect, it's not there. Um, there's other emotional aspects of this story, but not that one. <laughs> this video, I hope, will still be able to help um, all kinds of people who are going into this, uh, no matter what your reason, just because there's a lot of similarities. Since everything for me was functioning properly, the process for me could have been easier or faster than somebody who has uh, a fertility issue. I'm very lucky and I'm very thankful that I got this opportunity. A lot of people who get breast cancer are 60 and they already can't have kids and none of this is an issue for them. Chemotherapy and the specific type of chemotherapy that I had to do has a higher risk of this. It can uh, mess up your ovaries, um, it can make you go into early menopause and some people when they're done with the chemotherapy uh, bounce back and everything starts working normally again, but other people are just stuck like that for the rest of their life. I'm really young, so they think that I have a good chance of returning to normal, but there's really no way to tell and also there's not that much research out there on it because there's not that many 22 year olds in the world that have breast cancer. And the doctors, they wanted to start the chemotherapy as soon as possible. But my oncologist recognized that this might be something that I want to do. So he said it wouldn't be too bad to delay the chemotherapy by a week. March 13th was my first appointment with the fertility place. I go in not knowing really anything about this and not knowing at all what to expect because obviously I've never looked into this. My older sister Suzanne, my mom, and my boyfriend Gray came with me to the appointment. They always have to go get more chairs and try to squish everybody into a room. So we were in there for about two hours talking to the doctor and we would have been in there longer, but I had another appointment to get a PET scan done, so I had to leave. I'm not going to explain too much of the specifics because this process is always changing, it seems like, so five years from now, this could be a completely new process. Basically, what they do is they give you a bunch of shots that you inject um, yourself every day to uh, stimulate your ovaries and grow the egg follicles inside them. The ovaries will grow to the size of grapefruit and then once they are big enough they are able to go in with a needle and extract the eggs. The whole process itself takes about 7 to 14 days. Anyway, they go through the eggs and they figure out which ones of those eggs are mature and that's always a certain percentage. And then when you're ready to create the embryos, They'll take uh, the sperm and they'll do all their lab stuff and then out of all those embryos there's a certain amount that make it to a certain stage, like a blastocyst stage. And they still go through those and they look uh, through which one has the best chance of surviving and then they will um, put that one back into your body. And they just put one in, they don't put like five in hoping that one of them will survive anymore. I guess they now have it down to more of a science of which uh, ones are the best to put in and they have a higher percentage of surviving than they used to. But they put that in and then that has a certain percent chance of attaching or something and then you know all the regular risks with a pregnancy. Percentages and stuff will probably be changing over the years but I think she told us that if you extract nine eggs you'll probably end up with one or two good embryos. So we're all in there trying to figure out the best option for me to do. Freeze embryos, 
freeze eggs or don't do anything and hope that my ovaries return back to normal after the chemotherapy. So the advantage of freezing embryos over eggs is just that they have a higher chance of working. Using the frozen eggs just has a lower chance of uh, turning into the embryo that you want it to. But if you already freeze the embryos that look like they'll work, they just have a higher chance. But I immediately eliminate this option for a few reasons. First is I need sperm and Gray and I have been dating for a year and a third at this point and I'm 22 and he's 21 and finishing his last year of college and neither of us were thinking about anything like this ever before and didn't think we would have to think about it at this point in our lives and I'm not gonna go use some other random person's sperm. Two, it seems dumb to freeze embryos that I could possibly never end up using because my body could go back to fun functioning completely normally and I would never use them. I know you could donate them to someone else, someone else who needs them, but then those people would be having my children and that's a little weird, but you know, I'm all about helping people so that wouldn't be so bad, but I don't know, it's just a lot to think about at this point in my life. <laughs> Three, I still don't know how I feel about the entire concept in general, like I don't even know if I would go through with this process of freezing embryos even if I found out that I uh, had a problem becoming pregnant. I I'm not opposed to the idea right now either, I just would need more time to think about it. It's, it's just a lot. <laughs> so if I freeze eggs, they're just eggs. It's not like it's an actual embryo of a person. Seems like there's a lot less at stake here. The eggs go away every month naturally anyway, and so if I end up just discarding them, it's not like it's that big of a deal. <laughs> and then there are some possible risks of me going through with the entire process. There is a chance that the drugs uh, make my ovaries super, super big, double the follicles in them, and uh, they just blow up and causes a ton of bloating and a ton of nausea, then it would have delayed my chemotherapy even more. The other big issue, my breast cancer is estrogen receptive and the drugs that they would need to give me for this would increase my estrogen a lot. So basically I'd be giving the cancer fuel and being like, here, this is, this is the tool you need to grow even more. <laughs> they explained that even on the letrozole, my estrogen still will be a lot higher than normal. But they say instead of it being 2,000, um, it might be only a level of 400. And the doctor actually uh, later ended up doing a lot of research on this for me. And she found that having my estrogen up at a level of 400 for a week or so while they do the process wouldn't really affect my breast cancer that much, but again, we don't completely know. She said again, there's not that much research on this. So basically, um, my decision is, do I freeze my eggs or do I not? And the doctor's like, okay, you can take your time to decide, but there's a lot of things that we can do today that um, would help us later if you do decide to go through with it. We need to take your bloods so that we can check your levels of certain things to make sure that your ovaries are functioning um, properly. And We need to do a transvaginal ultrasound to look at your ovaries and your uterus to just make sure that there's no issues there that would uh, cause a problem when we inject you with all the stuff to grow everything. And she explains that the transvaginal ultrasounds are really hard for some people and some people just can't do them. And then they decide that this process isn't for them and they don't end up going through with it and uh, it would be important to figure out if I could do that. And I'm just sitting there thinking like, there's nothing I can't do. She took my blood and uh, did whatever with that and then she's like, alright, let's go do an ultrasound. And I was like, okay. So she's like, alright, um, I'll be right back and closes the door. I'm about to go into a lot of information that uh, a lot of people might not want to hear. Uh, if you would like to skip this part of the video, skip to the time that I am showing here and uh, you will not have to hear any of that. So the nurse comes back in and then she starts explaining something that I don't understand at all because I'm Samantha. It seems like she thinks that I should know what she's talking about so I just nod my head and I'm like okay because I didn't want her to think that I was stupid even though that I am. And then she's like I think your mom really wants to come in and I was like yeah she can come in it doesn't matter to me. Thank God she came in! So uh, she tells me to undress from the waist down and then she shows me the probe that she's going to be using for the ultrasound and she's like this is the probe, this is the end of it, it's not that much thicker than a super duper 
tampon or whatever and I'm like no that's massive she's like I'm gonna put a ton of gel on this and I'm gonna go really slowly so if it starts to hurt just let me know and we can stop she starts to put it in and the gel is freezing so I initially spaz out uh, but after that initial spaz out she starts going in really slowly and it's fine. She was like, you need to relax your muscles even though you probably have no idea what those muscles are. So she keeps going and I'm like, dang, how much farther does this have to go? And then it kind of starts to hurt. And I'm like, it hurts. And she's just like, okay, I'll stop. And it's not working because I tensed up and I didn't know what was going on. And I think to myself, I'm like, okay, I think I know what I need to do. I just need to calm down a second. But at that point, she pulls the entire thing back out. I started crying because I was frustrated um, in myself for not being able to do it. And then also because she pulled it back out and I was like, oh, now we're going to have to do this entire process again. She's like, okay, we're just not going to be able to do this. We won't do this today. And of course, that just makes me more upset because she's telling me I can't do something. And I hate it when people tell me that I can't do something. She sees me crying and obviously she doesn't want to be the person to hurt me. When I'm able to get out the words, I say, do it again. And she's like, really? And I'm like, yes. I'm thinking to myself, I better get my act together this time um, or else she's going to pull this out and this is not happening and I want this to happen. So the second time she does it, basically it goes in completely smoothly and she's just like, wow, that was really impressive. And I'm just like, thanks, I know. But uh, let's get on with this because this isn't the most comfortable thing in the world. So it was actually kind of interesting. She's looking at my uterus and she measured it, I guess. And then she goes over and she looks at the ovaries and she sees all the egg follicles in them. And she counts them all to see how many I have um, on the right side and then on the left. Trying to make sure there's no cysts or anything. And then we're done. And now we're welcoming back all the people who skipped through all those details. So if you're worried about the transvaginal ultrasound part, it's really not that bad. Um, my first experience was a little bit overwhelming, but I feel like I have a little bit of a special case. So I myself did pretty well. An average person has 8 to 10 egg follicles total, and I had 28 on that day. I think I had 11 on the right side and 17 on the left side. And all of that was really good because I was only going to have time to do one cycle of the egg retrieval. A lot of times when people do this, they, uh, get out their 8 to 10 eggs and then they do it again they get out another 8 to 10 eggs. Um, but I only had one chance, so it was really good that I was going to be able to get out, uh, theoretically, 28 eggs. And it can be more or less because sometimes a follicle could not have an egg and sometimes a follicle could have multiple eggs. So before we start, we have to get approval from my insurance company. And I have really good insurance that actually covers this. If your insurance doesn't cover it, there's a lot of organizations out there that can help you with the cost of this. Specifically, I would have applied to Livestrong because they help cancer patients who may have trouble with fertility. Anyway, the approval from my insurance company was taking forever. And I was getting super anxious. Everyone was getting super anxious because we need to start right away. The They can't give me any of the shots or any of the things that I need to start until we get that approval. Originally, I was going to start my chemotherapy on March 22nd, but my oncologist is like, you can push it back a week and we'll be all okay. So. In our heads, we were trying to have the egg retrieval surgery by Wednesday, March 27th, so that I could start the chemotherapy on the next Friday, March 29th. But things were taking too long and we realized that that wouldn't happen. We were probably going to have to push the chemo back another week or maybe even another week after that. So I was getting really stressed. And I should also mention that I'm pretty sure that if you're normally doing this, they try to line up all of uh, when they give you the drugs and stuff uh, based on your menstrual cycle. And there's a higher chance of everything working, I guess. But for me, they just kind of went straight into it because they were like, we can't, we can't wait. So on Wednesday, March 20th, we still hadn't heard from the insurance company and we're calling every single day. The fertility place calls me and is like, hey, we still haven't heard from your insurance, but you can at least come in and get some blood work done because we need to do some infectious disease testing on all these diseases, which you definitely don't have, but we need to have proof of it. I'm like, this is dumb because I'm pretty sure we all know that I don't have an STD, but whatever. I go in and I start doing the blood and then somebody uh, runs in the room and they're like, we finally got the approval. <laughs> so then they give me all the stuff that I need, all this information on this medication that I need to order from two separate th pharmacies that will rush ship them to me. And they're giving me all this information on how to 
to mix up all the medication and how to inject it into myself and I'm like wow they tell me to start letrozole that Wednesday um, to start decreasing my estrogen. I will start doing the shots on Friday, March 22nd, which was the original day I was supposed to start chemo. We have a family friend that is a nurse that came over and helped us with the shots because I was a little bit freaked out about having to stab myself. Honestly, the needle is really tiny, so it's not that bad. But you know, if she was offering, and she was so nice about it, um, it was just easier. So basically what you have to do is that there's this gonal F drug, I guess, and you open that kit and um, there's this uh, powder in there and then there's a syringe with water and so you inject that amount of water into the powder and then uh, it mixes together. And then you take another syringe and get 412.5 units of it get some low dose HCG, which is something that needs to be refrigerated, I guess, and you get 10 units of that in another syringe. You mix them together just so that you only have to give yourself one shot instead of two. You screw on the needle, you make sure like there's no air bubbles and all this stuff. Then you inject it into yourself an inch away from the belly button. You pinch your skin um, on the left or the right or below, basically wherever you can get some skin. and inject it. So I do this every single day over the weekend and then on Monday I have another appointment. And every appointment I go to they need to do an ultrasound to check the size of the egg follicles. The biggest follicle was 8 millimeters. They want the biggest ones to be around 20 millimeters before they give you a trigger shot. And then every single day I go into the office they need to take blood from my arm um, to check my level of estrogen, maybe some other stuff. If they look at the numbers and they see that I don't need as much, then they lower the dosages. So, um, to give you a timeline of everything, on Wednesday the 27th I went in and my biggest follicle was 13 millimeters. I'll put the numbers on the screen here that they found. Then they tell me that things are getting bigger and it's time for me to start coming into the office every day. And then it's also time for me to start another, another medication to inject into myself, yay. Cetratide, and this one has instructions. Just seems like it's a little bit more difficult. It's refrigerated and you have to swirl it but not shake it, and it's really time sensitive. This is just supposed to keep you from ovulating prematurely, and it will do that, and it's effective for 24 hours. So you need to make sure that every 24 hours you're doing it again. Since they said I could do it in the morning, I could have the nurses in the office do it for me. I could just bring it in and they would inject it for me. And then they tell you don't be alarmed if this leaves a red tender itchy mark at the injection site. It will eventually go away. And here's a picture of what mine looked like the second day I did it. <laughs> um, and it does. It goes away. So I start going into the office every single day. On Thursday the 28th, um, these are the numbers they got. My estrogen level um, that day had gotten up to 502. So we were getting a little bit nervous because, well now it was over 400, but I was kind of like, all right, it's only gonna be a few more days at, at this level. On Friday, March 29th, these are the numbers that they got. But on that Friday, they put in that my estrogen level was 2,439. And I was like, what the heck? How did it go from 500 something to that? And I was just so, so scared because I was like, this is a lot of estrogen. And then, but then we called them and apparently they had just entered the wrong number and it was only 775, which was still pretty high, but not 2000. <laughs> and now things are starting to get really hard. First, I have bruising all over my arms from them taking blood every single day. And they're starting to have trouble to find veins. They're starting to do stuff in my hands. It's the worst <laughs> when they're just digging around in there trying to find a vein. Also, my stomach was super sensitive from the shots. Doing the actual shot itself doesn't actually hurt. I guess doing them every single day just made my stomach all feel all tingly and sensitive. My ovaries were growing. So I was bloated all the time and I didn't really feel like eating as much. Also, because my ovaries were bigger, the ultrasounds were becoming more uncomfortable. They just hurt a little bit more. And also with the ultrasounds, there's three different doctors at that place and it seemed like every single day there was a new doctor that was doing it. And the first time that I had one of the guy doctors, 
I kind of freaked out a little bit just because I was like, well, how do you know what this feels like? <laughs> also, the nurse that was doing the shots for me was going to be gone for the weekend. So my mom and I were going to have to figure out how to inject that regular stuff into me, which wasn't bad because we had seen her do it a million times and we knew. But again, I was just kind of worried about stabbing myself, but you know, we did it and it all worked out. We didn't die from any of these experiences. But you know, all these things are things that I can get over. It was just a little bit difficult. Then on Saturday, we were so close to being able to do the trigger that night because there's that one that's at 22, 21 millimeters, but they wanted another one to be at 20 before they gave me the trigger shot. My estrogen level at this point is like a thousand. Still getting up there. Sunday, we go in. These are the numbers they got. They're like, all right, so this is the day we're gonna do the trigger shot. They uh, leave me a message. We will see you on Monday morning at eight o'clock to check a proge progesterone level to make sure you had a good response to the Lupron trigger that you're going to do tonight at 9.15 p.m. Everything with this entire process was super time sensitive. I needed to have that trigger shot at 9.15 p.m and then I needed to have the actual egg retrieval surgery on Tuesday at a certain time. So that night, I'm so glad it was that night, uh, we had the nurse come back over and she helped us with all the instructions for the Lupron trigger shot. I guess basically what it does is give you one last boost and makes all of your other egg follicles kind of catch up and get to a bigger size so it's easier for them to get eggs out of them. A lot of times it makes people feel pretty sick because your ovaries are getting really a lot bigger. I didn't feel that bad. It just kind of felt like there was a lot there and uh, I didn't feel like eating much. So on Monday we go in, they do the such tide like they always do at 8.15. Try to find a place to take blood. They tell me later um, that my level of progesterone was 11. Don't know what that means, but apparently it indicates that the trigger shot was effective and that we're allowed to proceed with uh, the egg retrieval for Tuesday morning. So on Tuesday, April 2nd, I went in for my surgery. I will be making another video on the specifics of that day because it's a little bit funny because they had to give me drugs to put me to sleep. Apparently I become very mean when I'm on drugs. So I argued with the nurse multiple times and uh, it's kind of an interesting story, but um, otherwise, the surgery, you go in, they put an IV in your arm. Uh, for me, it was really hard for them to do because of all the times they had taken blood, there was bruising everywhere, but you know, they found a vein eventually, and <laughs> I went into the operating room, they gave me anesthesia, I went completely asleep, they went in and sucked out all the eggs that they needed. And I came back out, I woke up, everything went perfectly fine. And then they tell me right then that they extracted 29 eggs, which is great. And then later in the day they call me and they tell me that 17 of those eggs were mature and those 17 eggs were being frozen. And a lot of people feel totally normal the next day, they say. I was still a little bit sore, nothing major. But I just worked from home. I didn't feel too bad not to work, but I just didn't want to have to go in. So, and then after that, I was uh, totally fine. And I was totally fine to start the chemo on that next Friday, April 5th. So overall, uh, for me, it went really well. Obviously, it was really difficult for me to go through with all that, to have to keep injecting myself with stuff, to do those ultrasounds every single day. I really hated the ultrasounds. <laughs> if you have anything that you would like to know that could help you with your egg retrieval, um, no matter who you are, if you're a cancer patient, or if you're doing this for any other reason, please leave a comment. Please don't be afraid to ask any questions. Um, I would be happy to answer them. So. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this video of me again just talking. Please make sure to like this video to give it support and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos like this um, or other things or if you just kind of like me. Um, and if you would like to know more about my breast cancer, I have another video that I made about uh, all the specifics on how I found out that I had it. Yeah, you can click and watch that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.